What's up, my dudes? Home to the dwarves and Gnomer Egan exiles, Ironforge stands as a symbol that represents the power of the Alliance. Carved and constructed at the heart of a mountain in the center of Dune Moro and the kingdom of Cosmo Don, this city represents the undeniable skill in shaping rock and stone that the dwarves have. The gnomes, after their original city of Gnomeragon was taken over by the Trogs, have come to Ironforge for safety and to rebuild anew. Since settling here, they have converted an area of Ironforge to their liking, known as Tinkertown. With their skill in engineering, they provided for the Alliance the Deep Run Tram. This connects both Stormwind and Ironforge at a travel time faster than that of taking a flight path between the cities. At its heart, Ironforge houses the Great Forge, as well as what's known as the Great Anvil, both of which act as resources that most of the best dwarven blacksmiths come to take advantage of. Neighboring the Great Forge is the High Seat, or the Court of High King Magni Bronzebeard. Magni himself forged the Ashbringer upon the Great Anvil, which is a legendarily powerful sword known for its use against the Scourge. Lined around the Great Forge are a series of shops and trainer locations for herbalism, first aid, enchanting, cooking, mining, tailoring, skinning, and blacksmithing. The surrounding environment provides empty houses for guild meetups and chill-out spots, and a conveniently placed Griffin Master. From the outside in, nothing but the awesome gates of Ironforge are visible. This makes Ironforge an impressive major city strategically, as besides entering by the Deep Run Tram through Stormwind first, it really only has one way in and out for those that stand against it. At these gates is an imposingly large statue at nearly 100 feet tall, commemorating Modimus Anvilmar. He is a revered figure by the dwarves, as even after the Bronzebeard clan, the Wildhammer clan, and the Dark Iron clan were formed in Ironforge, his skill and diplomacy kept their tension at bay. All of these clans lived together at one point in Ironforge with Monimus at its heart, all prior to the War of the Three Hammers. This war came as a result of High King Anvilmar passing away from old age, to where a civil war broke out between the clans for dominance. On this statue, the weapon that he's wielding in his right hand was known as the Hammer of the High King. This was lost during the War of the Three Hammers, then brought back when the three clans created a truce under the Council of the Three Hammers. The Commons is likely the most popular spot for players to hang out in Ironforge. It's an area of congregation for the people of the Alliance to celebrate holidays like Feast of the Winter Vale or Hollow's End. It houses a bank, auction house, inn, and an assortment of shops. The Forlorn Cavern is a dark place in the back of Ironforge where you can expect to find the Warlock, Rogue, and Fishing Trainers, as well as merchants for things like poisons and weapons. Hall of Explorers is a section of Ironforge that represents the Dwarven desire to understand the world around them. Here you can find a museum and library where adventurers and scholars study into the histories of Dwarven society and look after fossils from ancient life. The Military Ward is a command center and arsenal for Ironforge's army. It serves as the war headquarters for the city. Here you can find weapon masters and a variety of different merchants, and inside the Hall of Arms are the warrior and hunter trainers, as well as the battle masters for Warsong Gulch, Arathi Basin, and Alterac Valley. Back at Tinkertown, where the Deep Run Tram is directly linked to, you can find the trainers for engineering and alchemy, as well as the King of Gnomes, High Tinker Geblin Mechatork. The Mystic Ward is another beautiful beautifully constructed area within Ironforge. Aside from the reagent vendor and various other merchants, the Hall of Mysteries is what attracts the attention of most. This is the hub for the mage, priest, and paladin trainers, and where you'll on occasion see many people appear in due to the mage port to Ironforge leading directly here. On the second floor, there's a nice open view to see the halls of Ironforge, as well as the beautifully luminescent pool in the middle of the Mystic Ward. Residing below the Great Forge is the most ancient and forgotten section of the city, Old Ironforge. The only directly link to it would be through a gate through the high seat, but that's unfortunately closed off. That is, unless you exploit the terrain in Ironforge and make your way down there. I did that for you guys, so I'll give you a tour of this area as we wrap up the video and let you guys check it out. Ironforge, in terms of its positioning, is at a very convenient spot for the Alliance. Most Alliance players, like myself, will set their hearth to Ironforge because it's right near Menethil Harbor if you need to get to Kalimdor, and it's very close to things like Blackrock Mountain, and it's the closest major city that we have to get to the western and eastern plague lands. I personally love it because dwarves are my favorite race and the architecture is so beautiful. I think it's a great place to flaunt your gear, chill out with your guild, really relax and enjoy the environment. For me, there's no better spot. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons. You guys mean the world to me. Please enjoy the rest of the footage of Old Iron Forge and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace out.
Tibidar. Tibidar looks so dumb. <laughs> Giant female head. 